Come on, make some noise out there. Come on, come on, come on. Here we go. No need to worry. No need to worry. No need to fret. No need to fret. Ah, oh, yeah. For my God's never. For my God's never. Failed you yet. Failed you yet. Just keep on trusting. Just keep on trusting. Nothing's too hard for him. Nothing's too hard for him. He can do anything. He can do anything. Oh, come on, put your hands together. Tell somebody, God will.
hello and welcome to 2020 Super Summer Convocation. I'm Reverend Tamika Baker, the proud pastor of Allen Chapel AME Church in Bryan, Texas. It's time for Praycation, so go ahead and start a watch party. That's right, click there right at the bottom of your screen. Go ahead on Facebook and hit share. And if you're on YouTube, share the link with your friends and family so that they can join in with us on worship. Come on, come on, if you're on the 10th District website, start a watch party, hit share, because we're ready for Praycation. Let us pray. Almighty everlasting God, creator and the maker of all things, and the judge of all mankind, we come before you this day, O oh God, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. And because of who you are, Lord, we give you glory and honor and all praise, and we lift up your holy name. We lift up our voices, O oh God, in praise, and we lift up our hearts in worship, and we bow down in prayer, and we call up on your holy name. Father, we thank you that you have blessed us to assemble in our various locations. For we know, O oh God, that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we will ask or think. We thank you, O oh God, for that you have allowed us to, to see this another day. And we bless your holy name. We thank you for new mercy. We thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you, O oh God, that even in this season that you are able, O oh God, to keep us. Because our faith and our trust is in you and in you alone. Father, we hear the reports of the doctors and the governors and the president of the United States. But, oh God, we will believe your report. And so, God, we thank you because you are a keeper. And you will keep us, oh Lord, in perfect peace as we keep our minds stayed upon thee. And so, God, we thank you, oh Lord, that as you lead us, oh Lord, that we will walk in your straight and narrow way. Father, we bless you and we thank you for our Episcopal leadership, for Bishop Vastai Murphy McKenzie and our supervisor, Dr. Stan McKenzie. Cover them as they lead us higher. Father, we thank you, O oh God, that no matter what we're going through and no matter what we are experiencing at this time, that you are still able to change, use us to change the atmosphere. And so we speak change into the atmosphere at this day. We thank you, O oh God, for your word that it will go forth this day. And we give you praise. We will lift you up, O oh God. Father, O oh Lord Jesus, thank you. And we, O oh God, renew our minds and restore our joy and our health and our strength. And we will ever give you the praise. We lift you up, O oh God. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. And we praise your holy name. And it is in the name of Jesus that we ask it all. And the church of the living God said, Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Today's scripture comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 37, from the New King James Version. And it reads, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. May God bless the hearers and the doers of his word.
10th Episcopal District. Welcome, of course, to our virtual Super Summer Convocation. Nobody can do it like the 10th District. That's right, from our leadership, Bishop Vashti McKenzie and Dr. Stan McKenzie, from the YPD, the WMS, the clergy, and the lay, we represent the God Squad. From San Antonio to Austin, from Amarillo to Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Waco, Killeen, and in between, we we are the 10th District, and this is us. and thank you for joining us in worship today. You know, one of the highlights of any worship encounter with God is the opportunity to give back to our great God who has been so good to us. God is generous to us and he's kind. And what God says is, I love it when my people give back to me cheerfully, not grudgingly, not because somebody made me do it out of necessity. God says, I love it when you give cheerfully. Won't you join us today in a cheerful gift back to God? The 10th District utilizes a number of giving platforms. You can use Givelify. All you have to do is download the Givelify app and search for 10th District AME Church or use Cash App. Our Cash App tag is dollar sign 10th District AMEC. And please note that 10th is spelled out on both of those platforms. Remember, God takes delight. God enjoys those who give. Won't you join me in prayer as we receive these offerings today? God, we bless you and we thank you for the opportunity to give. God, you've been so good to us and we don't take that for granted. So God, today we come joyfully, cheerfully giving back to you. Now God, our prayer is that you bless the gift and bless the giver, that they both might be used for kingdom building. In Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God together say it, amen. Thank you all so much for being faithful in your giving. God bless you. We want to encourage you to join us for the Selah, the Home Edition. This leadership encounter is available on the Selah Leadership Encounters 
Facebook page. This Monday, we'll have our guest, Reverend Dr. Claudette Copeland, the founder and CEO of Women's Educational and Healing Retreats Incorporated, and the founding pastor of New Creation Christian Fellowship, as well as former WNBA player and Morgan Stanley financial advisor, Janae Walker Macklin. This conversation will be moderated by none other than the Sela founder and host, Bishop Vashti McKenzie. Won't you join us? That's July 27th at 7 p.m. Beloved, faith doesn't grow in seasons of ease, but grows on the seas of crises and challenge. In fact, faith eats trials for breakfast, tribulation for lunch, and then tells the testimony at the dinner table. <laughs> faith doesn't make it easy, but it makes it possible. This same Jesus Christ calls us to live a life of unimaginable adventure, launching out beyond the shores of our comfort zone the moment we choose to follow Jesus. Uh, Jesus is the pathway, that's word, to a new life, that's word. I am the gate and whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Don't you believe that even in the midst of three pandemics, we can still have an abundant life? <laughs> this morning, our precation preacher is the Reverend Dr. Erica Crawford, Connectional President of Women in Ministry of the AME Church and Pastor of Mount Zion AME Church in Delaware. In addition to her undergraduate degree, Dr. Crawford received a Master of Divinity degree from New York Theological Seminary and a Doctor of Ministry degree in Pastoral Care and Counseling from Fordham University in New York. Her doctoral project was entitled, Serving Them is Killing Me. <laughs> Using technology as a vehicle for self-care for bivocational pastors in the black church. Now let's pray. Let's pray as we prepare ourselves to hear from heaven one more time. Be ready to receive the word of God from Dr. Erica Crawford. Holy is the Lord. 
Bishop McKenzie for the invitation to greet this body. To Supervisor McKenzie, the presiding elders, pastors, preachers, and great people of the 10th Episcopal District, it is my joy to be with you again. I bring you greetings from the 1st Episcopal District, where I serve under the leadership of Bishop Gregory G. M. Ingram and Reverend Dr. Jessica Ingram. My brothers and my sisters, I am excited about the opportunity to share with you on prayers that prevail. Let us look to the Lord in our prayers. Gracious and holy God, meet us in this space. Use this opportunity, God, to empower us, to encourage us, to enliven us and embolden us. That when we come before your throne with prayer, we offer unto you prayers that prevail. Bless us now, God, and when we come down from this mountain, let your presence stay with us. In Jesus' name, amen. My brothers and my sisters, we are living in difficult days. Days where some days we are disgusted, some days we are disgruntled, some days uh, we feel dispirited and dismayed, some days uh, it is heart-wrenching just for us to go on, but, but I want to challenge us not to lose hope in these times. Having hope is important because hope uh, causes us to get up in the morning and put one foot in front of the other, believing and convinced that this will be better, that every day will be better that every day will get stronger, that every day will get closer because hope is a, a positive, optimistic disposition that we take as people of faith. And when we have hope, we hold on to that hope by anchoring it in prayer. 
My brothers and my sisters, on Sundays, all we have is hope and prayer. And when we couple those two together, it propels us to the next level. It takes us to the next place. And so I just want to take a moment to share with you uh, three thoughts about prayers that prevail. Six scriptures that I hope will be a blessing to your life. Number one, my brothers and my sisters, when we look at prayer, we have to know that prayers prevail when we make them personal. When we are in right standing with God, when we have a personal relationship with God. The, the scripture says to us in Proverbs 28 and 9, If one turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. In other words, my brothers and my sisters, as we go to approach the Lord in prayer, one of the things we have to be mindful of is the way we live our lives. Are we following God's creed, God's commands, God's precepts? Are we walking with God in a way that inclines God's ear to hear our prayer? It's personal. It's about our personal relationship with God. But not only is the vertical important, my brothers and my sisters, our horizontal relationships are equally as important. And that's why um, the psalmist said in Psalm 41, verse 1, Blessed are those who have regard for the weak, for the Lord delivers them in the time of trouble. We are living in troubled times. And if we want the Lord to deliver us, if we want our prayers to prevail, we have to look at, we have to survey, we have to pay attention to the way we treat other people. How do we interact with the Walmart reader? How do we speak to the cashier at the grocery store? How do we interact with the gas attendant or the fry guy at McDonald's? What do we say when we are around strangers, when we are with the immigrant, when we're interacting and engaged with those who are living on the fringes of life, who have been marginalized, who have been outcasts, who are differently abled or disabled? How do we interact and engage with those who are not in our social class, who don't have our educational level? All of those engagements, all of those interactions impact our ability to have a powerful prayer. It's personal. What are our interpersonal relationships and how do those interpersonal relationships impact our prayer life? My brothers and my sisters, it's not just about us flinging words up and landing on heaven's door. It is about how we interact with the horizontal and the vertical that impact our prayer. Prayer that prevails is personal. But secondly, I want us to give consideration to what we need to do to prepare for prayer. We, we, we need to prepare for prayer. It's not that we just get up and fling some words at my brothers and my sisters. What is our motivation when we pray? That's why James chapter 4 verse 3 says to us, When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. How much of our prayer life do we spend asking God, begging God, pleading with God to give us something that will benefit no one but ourselves, that will only be a blessing to the people in our inner circles? I want to challenge us today. I want to push us today. I want to pull us today because I want us to understand that if we want our prayers to prevail, we have to begin looking at our prayers and understanding God is never going to bless us just for us. That when we go to God and we ask in prayer, we have to be willing to intercede on somebody else's behalf. That when the Lord blesses us, that other people may be blessed. I said the other day uh, in my Bible study, I was thinking about American Idol and a young woman who won. Uh, her name was Just Sam. And on American Idol, they asked her um, uh, what she was going to do with her money after she won. She was in an interview and someone asked her what was her plan after she won and one of the things she said was she intended to build a hospital in Liberia and the, the woman who was interviewing her asked her why she wanted to build 
a hospital in Liberia and she said because she found out on this journey when she was interacting with her grandmother who was uh, who immigrated here from Liberia that her grandmother would send money back to Liberia but she could never really send enough to do the work she envisioned doing and when she asked just Sam asked her grandmother grandma if I won and I got money and I gave you the money what would you do with the money she said I would build a hospital and so just Sam had a beautiful voice. She's a she's immensely talented and a gifted young woman. But I'm convinced it was because her spirit said, if, Lord, if you bless me, I'm going to be a blessing to others. If you put me up on a platform, I'm going to use the platform for your glory that others might be edified. My brothers and my sisters, sometimes we're blocking our blessing. Because the Lord wants to do something for us, but the Lord knows that we're not in a place where we're willing to be a blessing to other people. And in this season, we need our prayers to prevail. So we have to look at the way we ask God. What is our motivation? Are our motives pure? When we look, talk about our prayers prevailing and we're preparing for those prayers, we have to look at mitigating relationships. My brothers and my sisters. In this season of solidarity, in this season where so many are home and sheltering in place and so many are working from home and so many are in isolation, quarantine, one of the things we have to begin to look at in this season is as we prepare for God to shift the atmosphere and we begin to ask God to do the unimaginable, the incomprehensible, we have to begin to look at relationships. If we want our prayers to prevail, ask yourself, who am I in right standing with and who have I fallen out with that I have not forgiven? Mm, difficult questions sometimes to ask because it's not about who has apologized to us. It's about who we have forgiven. Mark 11 and 25 says to us, Jesus said, and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your father in heaven may forgive you your sins. My brothers and my sisters, if we want our prayers to shift the atmosphere, to change the situation, the circumstances, the communities that we live in. We're going to learn how to have to learn how to forgive people who may not deserve your forgiveness. But the truth of the matter is God forgave us. So how dare we hold somebody to a toll that we can't measure up to ourselves. I'm going to say to us that our prayers will prevail when we mitigate relationships and I'm not saying my brothers and my sisters we have to invite them to the Thanksgiving dinner we don't have to sit at the table with them for the barbecue we don't have to go by and take pictures of them for the prom we don't have to do any of those things but what we have to do is, is create forgiveness in our heart make room in our heart to forgive those people who have abused us and misused us those people who have oppressed us and suppressed us and repressed us because that is not our issue that issue is God's issue and when we trust God we trust that God will make every crooked road straight and bring down every mountain, raise up every valley. It's not our issue. Our job is to forgive so that when we go to God, God might hear our prayer. Last, my brothers and my sisters, I want to encourage us to go to God with power. And how do we pray with power? We pray with power by executing our faith. Mark 11, 24 says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Believe you have received it. You don't see it, but you know it's on the way. You can't hold it, but you know it's on the way. You can't spend it, but you know it's on the way. You can't hear it, but you know it's on the way. The word of God says we have to begin walking and living as if we have the manifestation of the things that we have believed God for. And if we don't believe God can do it, we don't even need to trouble God about it. I tell my congregation all the time, if you need money, the last person you're going to call is somebody who's always broke. Why? It has nothing to do with the fact that you love them or don't love them. They're in your family, they're your brother, your sister, your cousin, your niece, your nephew. None of those things. You don't call people for money who can't give you money. 
You don't even waste your time because you know they don't have it. The same thing applies to God. If you don't believe that God can do what God said God would do, if you don't believe that God can fix your life, can turn things around, can shift atmosphere, if you don't believe God can do those things, don't trouble God. Because this word says that if you believe in advance, God's going to work it out. And how it works out is not your issue. How it works out is God's issue. It's already yours because you're believing it. The other scripture I want to drop into your spirit. Psalm 62. Beginning at verse 5. My soul, wait thou only upon God. For my expectation is from God. God only is my rock and my salvation. God is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in God at all times. Pour out your heart before God. God is our refuge for us. My brothers and my sisters, when we go to God in prayer, we have to wait with expectation. It is expectation that gives birth to hope. It is expectation that causes us to put one foot in front of another. It is expectation that leads us to believe that today will be better than yesterday and tomorrow will be better today. My brothers and my sisters, it doesn't matter what is on the Facebook screen when you're scrolling. doesn't matter what you read in the newspaper. doesn't matter what we watch in the news. We wait on God. You cannot pull me. You cannot push me. You cannot knock me down. You cannot drag Drag me away. I am waiting on God. My hope is in God. And so when we look at prayers that prevail, we line ourselves up so that our personal relationship vertically and horizontally is right. We line ourselves up so that we are prepared to be a blessing to somebody else and that we have mitigated relationships and our right standing one with another and then we go to God with great faith bulldog faith unshakable faith and we wait with hope and expectation why because our prayers will prevail my brothers and my sisters God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ever ask or think. So because God can do more than we ask, let's start asking and watch God blow our mind when our prayers prevail. Let's pray. God, I thank you. I thank you, God, that I am in right standing with you. Thank you, God, that you are using me for your glory. God, thank you. Thank you, God, for encouraging the people. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to build each other up in faith, to sharpen each other, that we might go on in Jesus' name. God, thank you. That you've heard our prayer, not because we are perfect, not because we are flawless, but God, because we've come before you asking to be forgiven. And God, you said you would forgive us, you would purify us, and you would walk with us. And so God, we thank you right now that as we stand in this pace, we declare that the heavens are open. We declare that the earth is moving. We declare... That, that, that people are being loosed in Jesus' name. That people are being healed in Jesus' name. That relationships are being restored in Jesus' name. That you are working things out in our community for Jesus' name. That you are putting a hedge of protection all around us in Jesus' name. That the enemy is defeated, strangled, and suffocated in Jesus' name. Do what it is that you need to do in us and through us, God, to get us to a place where our prayers prevail. Use every situation and every 
circumstance, God, to build up our faith that we might come before you counting all things done in Jesus' name. And God, while everyone else is wavering, while everyone else is doubtful, while everyone is uncertain, God, help us to stand steadfast with hope and expectation. You are our rock. You are our salvation. And you have never failed. We believe, God, that everything we place at your feet prevails because it is according to your will. Bless now, God, everyone under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen. What an awesome message. Thank you, Reverend Erica Crawford, for allowing God to use you in a mighty way. After hearing that powerful message, there may be someone here today asking, what must I do to be saved? I want to spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. If that's you, whether you're sitting at home, riding in your car, or even at work, you can accept Jesus right now. Romans 10 and 9 says, all you have to do is confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. If that is you, please type yes in the chat box so that we may rejoice with you on your decision. Now, if you are searching for a church home, we invite you to send us an email at the email address on the screen. That way we can connect you with the church in your local area. Again, we thank you and we praise God for those of you who made the decision to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Be blessed. Amen. Thank you for that powerful word by Reverend Crawford. And let me just thank you all for joining us for 2020 Super Summer Convocation Praycation. Let me bless you as we leave this place, but never from God's presence. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Erica Crawford and the vacation team. Now let's prepare for our God Squad. As they get ready to prepare in a challenge, know your church. Under the leadership of Ramella Jones, our district YPD director, our Northwest, Peggy Jackson, out north, Olivia Thomas, southwest, Tasha Nixon, and our Texas, Sharma Hodge. Now let's go and prepare to worship. Hello everyone, my name is Jada Medford and I am a proud member of St. Paul AME Church. Welcome to the 10th District 2020 Super Summer Convocation, YPD Saturday Morning Worship Service. Our theme for this year is the God Squad. We are sanctified, qualified, unified, amplified disciples for Christ. Please allow me to introduce you to our worship leader for this morning, Ms. Jada Arnell Thomas, who is also the Kenesha YPD Worship Director. Please join us now in worship as we start up by worshiping with Jada for praise and worship. Proud of me, 
blessings of the day. We thank you for allowing us to worship together. We pray for the leaders of the church and our church family as a whole. We ask that you help us be more loving to each other, kind to each other, and obedient to your word. God, we pray for our country in the days ahead, knowing that everything is in your hands. We pray that this worship experience today will be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellency of him who calls you out of the darkness into the marvelous light. I have read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, doers of his holy word. against your heart. The enemy came up against your children. The enemy came up against your name. The enemy came up against your character. You will win. Win. You will Came up against your health. The enemy came up against your finances. The enemy came up against your vision. The 
MBK, but I guess your peace now. Race is one of those touchy subjects you don't really want to get into because you're afraid you might mess up. But the fact is that as early as three years old, children are classifying people based on their appearances. And so the worst conversation adults can have with kids about race is no conversation at all. Talking to kids about race needs to happen early, often, and honestly. Saying honestly, yeah, people are different, cultures are different, but that's a good thing. How boring would it be to have a, a crayon box that all had the same color? There are so many ways to approach racial conversations. You can use Dr. Seuss books, you can use any sort of pop culture reference. There are many, many movies animated movies especially that form a good entryway so it's helpful especially as a parent to watch the movie beforehand maybe or read a plot summary and say well what's happening here or look at all the other princesses what do you notice about them do you think anyone can be a princess do they have to have a certain skin color or look a certain way and it's usually good to sort of stop along the way pause two or three times strategically and bring up this conversation. Kids, just like adults, don't just respond to words. So this isn't just quote unquote talking to your kids about race. This is actually experiential learning that we need to do. I remember taking a class to the Lorraine Motel where Dr. King was assassinated. And when young people see that, that impacts them. And then we can use that experience, that hands-on, visceral encounter with race and racism to have a much more substantive conversation, and it feels different. 
And you can do that in your own local city. There are historical markers, those signs you pass all the time and never read. Stop and read them one day. See what they say, see what happened there, see if you recognize the names, or if you don't, go and look them up. Utilize all the resources around you and make sure that you're not just talking to your kids about race and diversity and justice, but you're showing them why it's important. Racism is detrimental to the entire society, no matter if you're black or white, Latino, Asian, native, whomever. Everyone is impacted, and that's why we need to raise a generation of people that's gonna turn around and try to change that momentum toward the tide of anti-racism and racial justice. Hello, my name is Calvin Williams. I attend Smith Chapel Amy Church. I'll be introducing the guest speaker, Jamal Rashad Walker. Born in Waco, Texas, Jamal is an upcoming pulpiteer. His passion for ministry began at an early age, attending St. Luke AME Church with his great-grandmother, Lorraine Walker, and family. At age four, he started ushering under the guidance of bro Vernon Clark, an experience that molded his heart for ministry. Since he began serving as an usher, Jamal has grown to become a humble servant of God who preaches with anointed power. Jamal takes his gifts and calling serious. He had the opportunity to cultivate his preaching by attending the 24th annual E.K. Bailey Preaching Conference, where he depended his understanding of homiletics. Jamal is a member of the Young People's Department, YPD, and was crowned a king for the YPD contest in 2015. As a true servant of God, Jamal is a self-taught musician having taught himself at an early age to play by ear. He currently serves as a Sunday school superintendent on second Sundays, as well as the minister of music at St. Luke. Jamal has been awarded a diploma in recognition of his accomplishments in self-discipline and self-control, certificates for perfect attendance and excellence. Honored for star reading in math June 2014, 2014, in addition to being recognized as a published author, Jamal received awards from McLennan Country Sheriff's Office for completing the curriculum in drug abuse resistance education and has made a personal commitment to be a drug free and avoid violence for Jamal. Living a life of purpose is his driving force. Mm -hmm. Talk a little too much, don't listen enough Sometimes it's way too easy for me To beat myself up Sometimes I hate the way I look When I look in the mirror One look from you, I know my flaws You love, you love my flaws Think they make me beautiful you don't see them as flaws at all That's why, that's why, that's why I love you Cause you are, you are the one who The one who loves my flaws Sometimes I get a little unsure I lie and secure Sometimes I know I might say some words that might cause some hurt Sometimes I get in my own way I'm way too much to put up with But you put up with it all My flaws You love, you love my flaws Think they make me beautiful But you don't see them as flaws at all That's why that's why, that's why I love you Cause you are, you are the one who The one who loves my flaws You think I'm everything when I think I'm nothing When I hate myself You still love me, love me And my flaws You love, you love my flaws Think they make me beautiful 
beautiful. You don't see them as flaws at all. That's why, that's why, that's why I love you. Cause you are, you are the one who, the one who loves my flaws. Oh, oh, oh. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for this wonderful opportunity and we praise God and we are just excited to be in this worship experience. And so there is a word from the Lord today. If you have your Bibles, wherever you are, please turn with me to the book of 1 Peter chapter 2. The book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and we will begin reading at verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, and we will begin reading at verse 9, and it reads from the New International Version. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Amen. That's enough. Amen. Praise God for his holy word. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And so this afternoon, as we share in this scripture, I want to talk from the theme that was given to me, the God Squad. The God Squad. One of the greater privileges that we have as human beings is being a child of the living God. One of the, one of the wonderful things that we get to experience is being a child of God and with us being children of God that comes with blessings and grace and mercy and favor what a wonderful privilege it is to be a child of God and that's exactly what they are talking about in this book of first Peter because it, it shows us that we have the wonderful privilege of being a child of of God. And if we've been walking with the Lord for some time now, we know just how wonderful of an experience it is to experience God's goodness and God's grace and God's mercy. We are better known as the God Squad. And when you're a part of the squad of God, can't nobody mess with you. Can't nobody ruin you because you are a child of of the Most High God. We are the God Squad. Even with all that we're dealing with, some may ask, how can you say it is a wonderful privilege to be a child of God when all of this mess is going on, when all of this chaos is going on? How can you say it's a privilege to be a child of God? Child of God, let me just inform you, many people have died during this pandemic and if you're still alive it's a wonderful privilege to be a part of the God squad because Lord knows you should have been taken out a long time ago you should have been six feet under a long time ago but God has sustained your life and so that's when we consider the fact that it's a privilege to be a part of of the God squad. Let me break the text down and then I'll be out of your way. Let me show you how much of a wonderful privilege it is to be a part of the God squad. It says in verse 9, but you are a chosen people, a royal 
priesthood, a holy nation, and God's special possession. You are a chosen people. God has called us to the fellowship of the saints. God has allowed us to have access to whatever he needs us to do. We are his chosen people. We are people with purpose. We are people with passion. We are people with power. We are God's chosen people. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. And what I love about the text, it says we are God's special possession, literally meaning that, that, that we came in a special form. We're not just some old dirty rag, filthy rag that you just use to your benefit. We are God's special possession, literally suggesting that God will use us for his glory. God will use us for his benefit. We are God's special possession. We are God's children. All of us are God's children. I can remember going to church and hearing those old saints say, when all God's children get together, what a time, what a time, what a time. It's something about the fellowship of the saints that allows us to experience worship on a different level. All I'm trying to tell you is it's a wonderful feeling to be a child of God. It's a wonderful feeling to be God's special possession. Glory to God. We are God's special possession. Watch what he says next. He says that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The church family, I love this part of the text because it seems to fit right on in with what we're dealing with today. He says we are to declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Stop right there. Who called you out of darkness? Many of us, many of us pertain to this season that we're dealing with as a season of darkness. This is definitely a season of darkness. The president is literally out of control. This is a season of of darkness this invisible virus that we have taking out innocent children and innocent lives we are in a season of darkness we cannot physically come to the sanctuary on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights because uh, this virus won't allow us uh, to come together and fellowship uh, with our dear brothers and sisters we are in a season of darkness even in our own personal lives, we, we, we tired of our children being at the house. We tired of sitting at the house. We bored. This is a season of darkness. And some have to ask the question, even I have to ask the question, Lord, how long are we going to have to sit in this season of darkness? Lord, how long are we going to have to deal with this season of of darkness. I can't tell you how long we're going to have to deal with this season of darkness. I can't tell you how long we'll be out of the sanctuary. I can't tell you how long we're going to have to social distance. I can't tell you when all of this will be over. But what I can tell you is I know a man in heaven. And this man has brought us uh, through tumultuous situations before. And so I'm not going to doubt him just because uh, we're in a season of darkness. Instead of me doubting him, I'll just lift my hands in adoration. I'll praise him in advance because I realize that if he did it before, he can surely do it again. And so instead of me crying all night, instead of me doubting what the Lord can do, I'll just say hallelujah anyhow because I know that this is not the first time we've been in a season of darkness and this is not the first time we've had to deal with things like this this is not the first time we had to deal with a crazy president in the White House 
this is not the first time uh, that we've had to deal with what we're dealing with. Uh, and so I realize that it's not the first time, uh, and I know it's not the last time, uh, but I know God uh, will make a way out of no way. Uh, and in, so instead of me being depressed because I cannot come to the sanctuary, I'll shout right in my living room, right in my kitchen, right in my bathroom, that the Lord will make a way somehow. The Lord will provide, and I will not let this get me down because I am a part of the God Squad. Somebody ought to be grateful today that you are a part of the God Squad. Even God's children have to deal with darkness, but you can't stop right there because the next line says he'll bring you into his wonderful light literally meaning that one day at one point in time when all of this is over God will make a way out of no way even if we have to deal with this extended period of darkness the good news is because we are a part of the God squad we won't have to deal with this always the old saint said trouble really don't last always and because I know Bible I know that the Bible says that weeping may endure for a night but the good part about that is joy comes in the morning uh, and joy and happiness are two different things uh, joy is when you going through but you still walk around uh, with a smile on your face uh, and my dare to you today to whoever is watching me uh, have joy maintain joy uh, in this season of darkness because if you maintain joy uh, in this season of darkness uh, one of these old days even if it's not on this side uh, God is going to show us uh, his power God is going to show us his light and we'll be able to testify that God is able to make a way out of no way. And so thank God for being a part of the God squad. Somebody right where you are, lift your hands in adoration. Tell God thank you because you and I are a part of the God squad. Don't give up. Don't throw in a towel. This is only a season of darkness. The light shall come in the morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody thank God for being a part of the God Squad. Praise God for the message and praise God for the messenger. Thank you, Brother Jamal, for sharing with us. Thank you for encouraging us and reminding us how important it is to be connected to the God Squad. Listen, this week I have been watching a documentary called The Last Dance. And it's a documentary that focuses on the last season that Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, and Phil Jackson were all together on the Chicago Bulls. It was a unit that built a dynasty. They were able to win six championships in eight seasons, which is why many argue that they are the greatest team to ever play the game. Now, I love basketball. I, I really love sports in general. And what the world of sports teaches us is how powerful it is to be a part of a team. And today, I just want to take some time to invite you to be a part of the God Squad. If you are not connected to God's team, today is the day that you get connected. Listen, don't worry. God does not have tryouts. The reason God doesn't have tryouts is because back on Calvary, Jesus laid it all on the court. I mean, Jesus laid it all on the cross. He gave everything for you. And now all you have to do to be a part of this team is acknowledge that you aren't perfect. Acknowledge that you are a sinner and that you've made mistakes. Believe that Jesus died for you and then confess him as Lord and Savior, and you can be a part of the God Squad. If you wanna get connected to the God Squad, all you have to do is leave a comment below and someone will reach out to you. Listen, there is no greater team to be a part of than the God Squad. And if you are commenting now that you wanna be a part of God's team, I just wanna say welcome to the family of faith. God bless you. Good morning. We want to thank you for worshiping with us. This is an invitation to join the YPD in giving back. We are a mission and outreach focused ministry, and with your help, we can do a lot more in our communities. 
you can give via Cash App or Giveify down below. We want to thank you for helping the YPD to continue to grow, glow, and go for Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we want to thank you for the givers. We want to thank you for the gifts that we have received. We want to bless the hearts of people who were not able to give. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good afternoon. My name is Rylan Jones, and today I will be saying our closing prayer. Whereby, please bow your heads and close your eyes. Father God, in our meeting together, let us remember that we worship the God who created this world. The God who spoke through his prophets from generation to generation. Led his people from captivity to liberty. Healed the sick fed the hungry, and was faithful even when faced with rejection. The same God who wants all people to be drawn to his love and grace, to know his forgiveness and the joy of his salvation. Let us put aside all that hinders and join together in worship and praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Beloved, we are living in unique times, yet God has created us essentially unique. We are a part of the God Squad. Super Summer Convocation has just been awesome, and I want to thank everybody who was blessed of God that blessed us with word and song. Praise God for our home team. Uh, that's our staff who makes everything work smoothly. They work hard. They labor they just love serving the Lord. I want to thank SJ Media uh, for all of our recordings. I thank all the psalmists who sang. Uh, thank you for watching and being a part. I want to thank uh, Reverend Dr. Ronald Slaughter for teaching our clergy institute and preaching our lunch praise break. Thank you, Elder Marissa Farrell, for preaching on Thursday night. Thank you. Bishop Michael Mitchell, President of the Council of Bishops for preaching on Friday night. And thank you. This morning, the Reverend Dr. Erica Crawford blessed our socks off. Now I want to remind you to join us on Monday, this coming Monday, July the 27th at 7 p.m. Central for Sailor the Home Edition on our YouTube channel and at Sailor Leadership Event page. Yeah, we have some hot topics and things we need to talk about. So Queens, come on and join us. If you love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself and you love to lean in, learn and laugh, then Sailor the Home Edition is just for you. Join our Sailor Online Facebook, uh, Facebook group. Then it's time to get some exercise. This quarantine 15 is hanging on too long and we're going to have to start getting healthy. So download your Map My Walk app, fill out your profile, look for your friends, and then join the 10th District Walk 160 Days. You can do it. God can help. I'm Bishop Vashti McKenzie. Thank you. Love you. Love you bunches. And here's your virtual hugs. Now, let's bow our heads and close our eyes and let us pray. Eternal great God, we come to you today to intercede for those who may need help in difficult times. We pray for those who quietly grieve for a loved one no longer in their lives. Give their heart and mind and soul a comfort that eases the pain, yet does not erase the memories of good times. Lord, we pray today for families in trouble and parents in conflict with their children. We pray for persons whose emotions are on a roller coaster up and down, marriages that are fractured or gone south, friendship that's on the edge, careers that are chaotic, our communities in crises and people in physical and mental pain. Today, God, we stand in the gap for leaders who bear the weight of decision-making in these challenging times. Today, God, we pray for ministry, the ministry of our spiritual leaders and their public and private lives. Today, God, we pray for clergy families who share together the blessings and burdens of ministry. We pray that even with COVID-19 and economic pandemic and 
injustices running through our land. We pray that vision still will be realized and dreams will come true and that your people will continue to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Lord, let light shine that others will see your good work and unspeakable joy will be the order of the day every day. We bring these requests to you because you promised that if we touch and agree, you would honor our prayers. Help us today to take the time to go in our room. It's time to go into the room. Shut the door of our prayer closet and put our face into the face of God. Thank you in advance for being a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. Thank you in advance for healing and deliverance. Thank you in advance for salvation. Thank you in advance for restoration, for restoring unto us uh, the years that the locusts have. Thank you in advance for hearing our answer and our prayer. And we pray as you taught us to pray in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen again. God bless you, beloved. See you next time. One, two, three, four. Jesus on my side. Jesus on my side. Jesus on my side. Jesus on my side. Jesus on my side.